Wow, guys. Um, o M G W T F S M H. It is May 3rd, 2019. Envy of the world. Unemployment, 49 year low. Wage hits uh, $27 an hour. Wow. Stock market endless rally. Trump approval, 50%. Envy of the world. Underneath the American flag, waving beautifully in the, well, microwaved winds. Envy of the world. I want to hear from all of my subscribers. I want, I want you to circulate this around the world. I want to hear from all of those living in other countries how you envy, envy Americans because our economy is booming. Yeah, we value nothing but money, but hey, we're the envy of the world. So all of you non-Americans living in other countries, are you like seething with jealousy over how great we're doing? Please, I really do want to hear from you. I really do want you to circulate this to um, those subscribers that you may have or anyone that you know outside of the United States because we need to hear we need to hear that envy loud and clear I'll show you where this is coming from but first I want you to listen to just a few minutes of a video posted by Gregory Manorino one day ago one day ago May 2nd and for all of you who are going to leave the comments oh my god I can't believe that you're posting a video of Gregory Man Manorino don't you know that he is a uh, Freemason there's a picture of Gregory Manorino wearing one of those Mason apron aprons um, look I don't know anything about that I don't know if it was photoshopped I don't know if he actually did join the Masons um, do you understand that a whole lot of young men in particular, they want to social network. They want to be a success and, you know, especially if they just got married and maybe have a child, they so want to network for business reasons. They're not going into this because they're evil people working for the other side. You really do need to know the details of somebody's life before you start slicing them up, degrading them, leaving these comments publicly because all you do is destroy trust. Now, I've been a subscriber of Gregory Manorino's from my early days on YouTube. And if you watch Gregory Manorino, you get a sense of who this man is and his character. As far as I'm concerned, this is a man who is a good, solid guy and I love the fact, because I don't hear it on any other channel, he talks about helping people. Please pay it forward, help others, love one another. He's not your regular Wall Streeter. All right, listen to him just for a few minutes. All right, everybody, here we are. It's Thursday, May 2nd, 2019. I want to cover couple of things with you that are literally getting out of control. Um, I've explained to you for the longest time that the propaganda and the lies were not just going to continue, but get worse. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. And I want to cover that. And I want you to be very careful with what you hear. I want you to analyze what they're trying to tell you so you can better understand how you are being directly lied to. And then let me just jump ahead and he goes into a little bit about our economy. Cover the propaganda and the lies and how you need to analyze it when you hear these things. Because understand what people do, it's very sad. People have lost the ability to use their own intellect. Um, they, oh, they have to look in the wrong spots, and they're being lied to. All you need to 
understand is a few basic concepts, sit back, try to think about what's going on around you, and verify what you are being told. It's not a hard thing to do. So let's, let's start covering a couple of things here that are, are frankly um, outrageous. That's the only word I can say. So we got a couple of pieces of economic news today, and I want to go through this with you. It's important. These are verifiable facts, what I'm about to tell you, and I'm going to urge you to check it for yourself. Industrial production here in the United States has been falling for months. Uh, manufacturing, slowing. I, I mean, we're exporting less. So what does that tell you? We are slowing down here in the United States and around the world, just as Powell said yesterday. I explained to you I gave him credit where credit is due. Now, this morning, here's the narrative, and I, I, I got a little crazy about it, and this is what I posted. 100% fake news, fake number. What am I referring to? The propaganda is this. Productivity soars in the first quarter, drives fastest yearly gain since 2010. So they want you to believe that productivity is, is skyrocketing in the face of slowing industrial production, manufacturing falling over the cliff, and exports dropping. Does that make any sense to you at all? Uh, the number they're pushing is a gain of 3.6%, blew past estimates, which were about a, a full percentage point lower. So, all right, I will link below to everything, and you can watch the end of that video. Um, I will link below to Gregory Manorino's channel, and let's just listen to what he had to say three hours ago. It is still Friday, May 3rd, 2019. This is my post-market wrap-up. So much stuff to cover. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, well, I guess we're going to start off with the basics. Nice rally on Wall Street today. Stocks finished higher across the board. There was also a simultaneous rally in the bond market. Again, this is an unnatural thing. When you see debt getting bought up, what that does is suppresses rates, forces cash into the stock market. There was several factors involved in today's market. Uh, number one, abysmal economic news. This this U3 number that's getting floated out here doesn't even tell a fraction of the truth as to what is actually going on. The U6, the real number, is more than twice that. We are aware of that. Earlier in the video I did today, I posted a link to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, a chart right in front of your face. It shows the labor force participation rate falling off of a cliff. As a matter of fact, People are leaving the workforce in droves. The last four months, a sustained loss. Sustained loss. You can't make this stuff up if you tried, okay? With that said, we got a cryptic message today from Warren Buffett and also a new alliance. Sounds like a movie title, doesn't it? And maybe it is. And I want to cover a lot of stuff with you, and, and I want to get it right. So I'm going to read things to you, and then I'm going to cover it. Let us start off with this. After the, the economic news that we got this morning, the fake number, the fake data, right after I finish that video, we got the Institute for Supply Management Services Index number uh, report, which showed it plunged to a two-year low. I know that's not surprising. But again, and it flies right in the face of the propaganda that is being spewed. Okie dokie. I will link below to everything. You can listen to the end of these videos. It is outrageous. These lies. You know, and it's interesting because, well, let me just... I just remembered what he is about to say. So I'll let you listen to... Gregory is saying it. This is 
that unlike anything that we have ever seen, the truth. You know, people make references to the previous administration, President Obama, absolute rigged off the Richter scale. We all know that. This one takes the cake. There's actually no comparison in a lot of it. Okay. It's interesting that he said this because, well, huh, here we go. Okay. I saw this. This is Trumpy's tweet. We can all agree that America is now number one. We are the envy of the world and the best is yet to come. Wow. 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 Okay. Um, it, it really um, saddens me to see what has become of this country, its quote-unquote leaders, and yeah, the majority of the American people. But I thought, oh, wow, all right, the lies are just getting more and more outrageous with every successive administration. So when I heard that from uh, Gregory Manorino, I was like, okie dokie, thank you for the validation. You're right, it is far worse far worse. And it's sad to see so many Trump supporters. But when you understand that, you know, we we got to this place to, to you know, we there are no morals here in this country. Um, we reflect depravity. Uh, we uh, it, it, the immorality. But it, what's really sad is that these lies, it's not, it doesn't just reflect Donald Trump. What it really reflects is the majority of the American people. The American people on the whole have lost it. That They just are uh, vacant of morals. They don't care about the truth. See, we would never have gotten to this place if the American people did not consent to being the people of the lie. If they demanded the truth, we would never have gotten to where we are now with this guy in the White House lying like it's, um, I don't belong here. I don't feel like I belong here. You know, I have been told by friends that I have high standards. And I always thought that was odd. I kept thinking, what are they talking about? I have high standards. And I realized the only standard I have is don't lie to me. I, I don't, please don't lie to me. Do you know how many, I, do you know why I'm alone? Because I had to walk away from every close friend because they all lie and they refuse to do anything about it. That is really sad. And you know, I feel that it is absolutely incumbent upon all of us to stop lying and stop supporting liars. Stop living a lie. That's our job. If we regard the truth as important. But I have found that even in our quote unquote truth or community, I have met a whole lot of subscribers and pretty much every one of them lies. They just lie and they don't care. We are a messed up people. Leaders could not come out and say these things unless the people were truly lost and didn't care about the truth because there would be so much backlash and there's none. See, this is this to me reflects. It's a travesty. 
It's a tragedy. But where is that response from the American people? Well, who cares? See, this lie is the, the consequences of it. Those Americans, and they are in the majority, who don't care about the truth, who love living a delusion, they don't want the truth, they don't want to lift themselves out of this incredible low road that so many are walking. They just, well, because the truth means changing. It, it does, you know, and people don't want to change. If they're comfortable, that's all they want. Okay, so let's think about this. Here, and this is about the economy, we're the envy of the world, we're number one, we can all agree, and the best is yet to come. Well, first, it's a major slap in the face to the millions upon millions of Americans who are suffering right now, and we've got a lot of them. Well, it's a real slap in the face when you think about all of the flooding that has taken place in the last six weeks. The farmers, well, their farms destroyed. Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota. Um, now we have Michigan, Iowa, uh, again, Texas. So many Americans are dealing with so many really horrendous circumstances now and he comes out with this do you know how many Americans are not working can't find work all right so let's say you have uh, someone coming out of college and they're looking for a job they can't find a job you know the only job that they can find is waiting tables bartending but they have that debt, you know, the, the student loan debt. And, oh my God, the rents. How am I going to afford paying back my student loan and rent? And then all the other bills. I can't do this. I'm going to have to go back to my parents' home. Because I can't, I, there's no way I can do this. And then the parents who don't care about the truth. And they think the economy is booming. And they say, get out there and work a little bit harder to try to find a job. The economy is fine. You can get a job. Or how about all the Americans <clears throat> who are really in bad financial straits and they, well, after the crash 2008 so many were laid off and then finding out I'm too old now I'm not getting hired now I have to have three jobs in the service sector and I still can't pay my bills I'm still just you know living paycheck to paycheck and having to use my credit card because I don't have the money to to live how I used to live. How many Americans believing this horseshit coming out of this sick, deranged president that we have will look at these people and say to themselves, something's wrong with them. Because they don't want the truth. So they're not going to see all of the external factors that are crushing Americans. The ramifications of lies are huge, widespread. But when it's coming out of your president of the United States, it is an abject disgrace. It is so disgraceful. I, I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand this country. I don't understand Americans. I don't understand the lying. I don't understand the acceptance of the lies. 
Uh, I haven't for a very, very long time. And I have seen it over and over and over again in the American people who do not care, don't care, as long as it doesn't affect them. Well, it does affect them greatly. They are not to be trusted. I don't have high standards. I just have standards. And I'm tired of being made fun of or having the finger pointed at me like something's wrong with me. Because I just want people to be honest. Because I know what lying does. It's so, it so degrades us as Americans. Don't you feel degraded when you see this guy who really is despicable and then you read something like this and you know so many Americans are suffering and the middle class is still dying. Oh boy, is the middle class dying. You know, I put the filter in past year. Why is the middle class dying out? The long death of America's middle class. The shrinking middle class. Uh, how we got here and why. The shrinking middle class. The current state of affairs. Why is the middle class dying out? Seven reasons to worry about the American middle class. America's middle class is slowly being wiped out. Middle class shrinking. U.S. middle class gone, but not forgotten. Hey, but we're number one. Okay? So li listen to your liar and believe him. And you're just as disgraceful as he is. Because the ramifications of you believing the lie are also great and widespread. And you will be hurting people by believing a lie from a classic liar. Great! How fabulous is this country? Well again, I'd love to hear from you guys around the world. Do you envy us here in the United States? All right, I'm going to read them. I dare you to tell me the economy is booming after reading this list of 19 facts about our current economic performance after taking an honest look at the facts. I do not know how anyone can possibly claim that the U.S. economy is booming. We hear this sort of rhetoric from the mainstream media all the time, but it doesn't make sense. The latest numbers are clearly telling us that the U.S. economy is not even moving in the right direction. Economic conditions are getting worse. The U.S. economy is already in a recession. This is Michael Schneider. This was Gregory Manorino. <laughs> Look, yeah, that's my face too, Greg, when you are watching this like what? The most fantastic outrageous lies. And it's obvious. See this is what's scary. You know with Obama um, when you understood what was happening because you did a little digging well you could hear the lies very clearly. But for those who weren't, you know, well, it got a little, you know, tricky because you did have to verify what he was saying. That's why throughout the Obama years, so many of us were saying, listen to what he says, but then watch what he does. With this guy, you don't even have to watch what he does because it's so blatant. In, in, just four months of him being in the administration, he came out and said, the economy has turned around. It was a miracle. It was obvious that nothing had turned around. Wow, man. I, I, it's flippy. It, it really is. It's like, you know, this isn't... You talk about the psychopathic narcissistic traits of lying, gaslighting, manipulating. He's just thrown out outrageous lies. Let me read the 19. Here, um, U.S. auto sales were down in April 6.1%. That was the worst decline 
in eight years. Number of mortgage applications has fallen for four weeks in a row. We witnessed the largest crash in luxury home sales in about nine years. Existing home sales have now fallen for 13 months in a row. In March, total residential construction spending was down 8.4% from a year ago. U.S. manufacturing output was down 1.1% again, well, during the first quarter of this year. But manufacturing, it's been going down. Down. Farm incomes are falling at the fastest pace since 2016. Wisconsin dairy farmers are going bankrupt in record numbers. Apple iPhone sales are falling at a record pace. Facebook's profits have declined for the first time since 2015. Uh, CVS will be closing 46 stores. Office Depot will be closing at 50 locations. Overall, U.S. retailers have announced more than 6,000 store closings so far, which means in 2019 we've already surpassed last year's total of closings. A shocking new study has discovered that 137 million Americans have experienced medical financial hardship in the past year. Credit card charge offs at U.S. banks have risen to the highest level in nearly seven years. Credit card delinquencies have risen to the highest level in almost eight years. More than half a million Americans are homeless. I'm sorry. We've, we've been half a million for, I don't know, too many years. Um, I remember reading that uh, like a decade ago. Uh, think about all of the people who lost their homes. The fires. The recent fires the directed energy weapon where people were losing their homes paradise how many homes gone do you really think that all of these people have recovered then all of the flooding and the flash flooding yeah we had Houston Harvey um, we have these major catastrophes but we've been having many catastrophes all over the country and people are losing their homes. How many Americans do you think are able to recover? No, more and more have gone homeless. Homeless. Homelessness in New York City is the worst it's ever been. Nearly 102 million Americans do not have a job right now. The number is worse than it was at any point during last recession. And yes, it's not just Gregory Manorino or Michael Schneider but other pundits like Brandon Smith, who says the bottom line is the next crash has already begun. It started at the end of 2018 and is only becoming more pervasive with each passing month. The question now is, when will mainstream media and the Fed finally acknowledge this is happening? I suspect, as in 2008, they will openly admit to the danger only when it is far too late for people to prepare for it. All right, look. No, clearly I'm not about, hey, numbers, and I want a lot of subscribers. <sighs> because I've lost a lot of those awake Trump supporters, and I don't care. Because if you are someone who demands to live in a lie. Go for it. But there is nothing about what you are doing that benefits any one of us, even benefits yourself. You degrade yourself. Get out of the lie. That is the only way that we could possibly manifest anything decent here in our country. Get out of the lie. Stop living it. Stop accepting the lies. And I'm not talking about just Trump. I'm talking about everyone. Those people in your life because we're surrounded by them. We're the people of the lie. That's what we do. We lie. And we lie to ourselves over and over and over again, telling 
ourselves sweet nothings in our own head. How fabulous we are, how good we are, how decent we are as we go about lying. Well, you can't have it both ways. Our soul is dying. Our collective soul is dying. And if that doesn't make you upset, well, I don't know what to tell you. But, yeah, we are dying. We're, we're actually dying at record numbers. But here, the true state of Americans' financial lives, only 3 in 10 are financially healthy. <laughs> Unemployment at a 48-year low. So this was November 16. So now we're at a 49 low. A 49 low. 49-year low. Oh, wow. Donald, you are just so fabulous, aren't you? November. It was a 48-year low. So why are only 28% of Americans considered financially healthy? Oh, gee. Could it be that these people are lying to you? American stress, worry, anger intensified in 2018. Americans, well, these polls, you can read about it and how they work on them, whatever. But what this, why I'm including this is because it's true. I hear it. I read it in the comment section. You guys talking about your own uh, stress that you're experiencing, the anger that you are facing from the friends and family members because everything is a friggin lie and you can't how could you possibly feel okay when everything is a lie because you have nothing to hold on to there's no security in lies there's there's no one that you can rely on trust is gone and when you get the magnitude, the magnitude of these lies, Americans lying, everybody going down, while these billionaires continue to put out this crap, it's horrifying. It shows that they have no respect for the American people. They degrade the American people. But worse is that the American people degrade themselves. Yeah, we have been demoralized. How do you get out of that? You start picking yourself up, doing that work necessary on yourself, Clean yourself up and begin to live honestly. Begin to develop relationships based on honesty. And that's, that's the only way that we could possibly turn any of this around. But Americans, especially the younger Americans who can't find work, who are living disillusioned, who probably think, what the fuck did I enter into? And yeah, white Americans are dying at an increasing rate. The epidemic of despair among white Americans, it's affecting their health and leading to premature death. Measuring human capital is uh, Systematic analysis of 195 countries and territories, 1990 to 2016, we are, we just keep going lower and lower. All right, so how did they do this? Uh, human capital is recognized as the level of education and health in a population and is considered an important determinant of economic growth. 195 countries for uh from 1990 to 2016, Finland, the best. Um, Niger, the lowest. China, 44. India, 158. USA, 27. We went down again. 
envy of the world, mortality rates rising for Gen X's and Y's. Why? Declining health, uh, declining life expectancies in these generations. Why? We're number one. We're the envy of the world. Because we are so profoundly sick. Many of the young, they can't find work, and they sure as hell can't find anything substantive. All they find is that we value money, which means either they get it consciously or subconsciously. We don't value you, your life. Oh, we talk a good game and we claim that life is precious, but we don't really mean it. Just give me my money. Difficulty finding jobs, which may contribute to greater health impacts. But hey, <laughs> we're the envy of the world. Death rates rise for wide swath of white adults. Youth suicidal behavior is on the rise, especially among girls. New survey shows Americans are unhappier than they've ever been in years. Why? Because all we do is value money and we don't give a shit about all of those who are really hurting. We care about all of those who are fine. The economy's great. It's booming. And for all of you Trump supporters, why is it that mainstream media never attacks him on these lies, never attacks him when he's about to invade a country. Why? Because you're watching a staged play. Please take a step back. Reevaluate your beliefs because your beliefs, well, may be wrong. But we've got major problems in this country. Major. And the older adults, yeah. We should be incredibly ashamed at what we have done to the younger Americans because we have left them with nothing. All links are below.